where uh, I think we can kick off. And for the next lecture entitled of Hairs and Hedgehogs, the race between data and print, or in other words, who was first, uh, data or print, we will now have Jürgen Meyer of the Hoffmann Group and Stefan Reinhardt of Informatica. Jürgen Meyer is the uh, Director of Product Data Services at the Hoffmann Group, and Stefan Reinhardt is the Director of Product Management at Informatica. In this lecture, you will actually learn how data and print can positively impact each other. And Mr. Meyer and Mr. Reinhardt will now present data from the current print project. After the presentation, you can ask your questions. Please enjoy, and the stage is yours. Thanks very much. Hello, everyone. We're very happy. I don't know uh, um, whether anybody has counted the number of times data was mentioned in the introduction. Um, this has accompanied me for a long, long time of my professional career. Data is not always uh, the hit at the uh, family uh, um, party. Uh, what do you do for a living? I work with data. Ooh. But at a print event, uh, you will find more data nerds than somewhere else. And this is why I do hope that Jürgen and I will together be able to actually reconcile data and usability with you. Why do I need data to start with? Uh, is data sexy? Can data make things sexy? And... Um, I come from the software producer angle, so I uh, hear a lot, uh, I see a lot, and I uh, s talk a lot, and uh, Jürgen can actually uh, compensate for this. I also love to speak, so no problem. Great. Um, uh, in terms of the structure, there are a few topics that we would like to address uh, gradually with you, issues that uh, keep people on their toes out there that move us. And then uh, I hope that we will be able to reach a, a joint conclusion. Uh, our title of Hares and Hedgehogs, um, this title will be repeated several times. When we sat down together um, and thought about our presentation, we did some brainstorming and then actually um, um, uh, came across this uh, fairy tale. Uh, it is 73 rounds, and I anticipated the uh, hair actually dies in round 74. Uh, but it always fits somehow, this fairy tale. And I also read it to my little daughter. So before we get started, let me ask you, do you re really need data? Well, let's kick off with the image movie of our new uh, uh, campaign at Informatica. Lifeless. If you listen carefully, you can hear that data, and it's whispering. Wake me up. Say hello to Informatica. This is more than the world's leading intelligent data management cloud. This will make your data larger than life, powering over 250 intelligent cloud services and launching new ways of thinking, innovating, doing. This is next generation AI powered access to trusted data and insights wherever and whenever you need them. Use what you need, pay for what you use. Connecting across any cloud for everyone across your organization. Truly democratizing data with the highest levels of scalability, integration and security. Chaos and uncertainty, gone. This is our time, your time, go time. It's time to take your business to new heights, to bring your data to life. You now have a single source of truth via metadata. Managing data to give it life, to make big bets, to help you leapfrog the competition. The numbers don't lie. Globalization, optimized. Customer experience, transformed. Digital innovation, delivered. So what are you waiting for? An invitation? Informatica, where data comes to life. Well, and you can already see it, that uh, data can also be seen a lot more uh, um, emotional, Hershey, uh, for instance, a liquid company from the US, or Dolby. 
And when you really dig a little deeper, then you can actually understand a lot better what um, is so cool about data. Yeah, I'm excited how the interpreters will actually uh, interpret this. From Silicon Valley to the Bavarian capital to Munich uh, and the Hoffman Group, where a traditional uh, tool uh, retail company looking back on uh, over 100 years of history. And uh, what do we have to do with Informatica? Well, we found each other not only because we talk about data, but we have the same company colors. Uh, orange. Orange is the color of our future. Hoffman comes, comes from the uh, store business, retail store. I even met this colleague 18 years ago when I started working for the Hoffman Group. But um, the point is that Hoffman always tried to uh, actually um, bring emotions through the stores, but also through field service. Yes, we still have it, but the digital markets uh, are gaining ground. And this is why it does not come as a surprise that uh, Hoffman sooner or later started asking, how do we tackle this? We initiated a program referred to uh, Hoffman as uh, Hoffman 4.0, um, in analogy with Industry 4.0, and it contains a number of projects. The classics include how do you deal with product data, with customer data, and since I have a technical background and am responsible for product data, I also have to look after Mesa data. And uh, I have been a data governance lead at Hoffman since the beginning of the year. So I have to manage how do we deal with data. You wouldn't believe how big um, the, the work, the amount that is uh, ahead of us. And this is why the point is also um, to demonstrate how you handle the product data, but also the customer data. And this is why, Stefan, yes, let's look at the nitty gritty stuff. Um, there are various terms for this. I have tried to uh, summarize it as unified commerce. The question is, uh, is it sufficient to only focus on product data? Or is there more uh, that should be factored in? And one topic that we actually address time and again with our customers is that the correlations between the various uh, data is lacking and uh, the correlation plays a more important role than people admit to. Uh, uh, very often we speak of different departments, of different software systems that are being used. And what we like to implement with our customers and also with the Hoffman Group is to reconcile these uh, uh, this data. PIM is, of course, key product uh, um, uh, information management. But as we heard before in the previous speaker's lecture, context, personalization is also part and parcel of this. And if you're thinking in along the lines of the hares and the hedgehogs, the hares are focused on the products, whereas the hedgehogs are already fine-tuning the setting screws in order to act in a more targeted fashion on the market. And we... Um, and some of you will know, 10 years ago, initiated our PIM project. Our old catalog system was uh, 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 called a media neutral database, and we started uh, reforming it completely. Today, we're on the verge of taking this to the next level. Of course, um, product data is still the central uh, focal point of our acting, but now we're linking these with customer data, with um, uh, various uh, data, external data from suppliers, for instance, and this is what it's all about, uh, to take it to the next level. 
And we're even going as far as um, uh, renewing our classification in the wake of this uh, bigger project in order to be ready for this next level in the sense of a further development of our f uh, various systems. And then we now also, uh, uh, after the uh, pandemic, um, at the latest, we're coming across a new economy, the platform economy. So the whole shift to cloud. Yeah, I still remember very well. I used to have user groups in the US, and they asked me, why aren't you sending it all to the cloud? And a week later, we did the same session in Europe, and people approached me, oh, don't go to the cloud, no. Now, I think we don't have to discuss this any longer. In Europe, in, in, in Germany and in Europe, this has become a, um, a standard procedure. The print cloud uh, session w was my session this morning, and it was packed with people. This is not the future, it's a reality. But what I find interesting is that there's not just one cloud. In, in English, they say, having your head in the clouds. When I talked to an analyst a few weeks ago, after he actually scrutinized me, I asked him, what does he uh, see in terms of problems referring to clouds? And he uh, said it in, in a nutshell. Now they're all in the cloud. All the departments, all of the companies, self-enabled buying, um, they actually circumvented IT. Now they're all in the cloud, but they're all in different clouds now. <laughs> and... Uh, uh, this is, of course, quite an issue. This is this chart is pretty well known among IT specialists. We have one intelligent data management cloud, IDMC, and uh, you could do end-to-end -end data management, and this is what many of our customers do. But you can also pick individual aspects. You can select uh, data quality, or I want to do MDN with it. And this is the key for many of our customers. They say, well, I have an Informatica uh, foundation. I could actually bring and integrate all of my data and, and then use it for the cloud application. But I could also cover individual areas. But this is not the classical vendor lock-in where you say, well, if you do one, then you have to do the rest as well. And if you opt for anything else, then you're in trouble. Quite interesting from uh, the Hoffman Group side. In 2021, we evaluated the handling of master, da uh, master data and arrived at the conclusion that MBM alone is not enough. It takes more than this, which is reflected by the data quality, for instance. Data quality has always been an issue for us uh, um, in the PIM uh, environment, and now, the point is um, we have to be aware of our data. Is the SAP data the ones that are found in the PIM? Are we speaking of the same data? Or um, were they transformed between the two systems? Maybe they're saved in a different way. Or is it the same data? Is the contents the same in, in, in the boxes? As for example, uh, with the uh, data catalog to learn which metadata is really saved. And then the next step is uh, the governance and privacy uh, topics. I'm the data governance lead now. This is a huge issue in the company. To find out in a company which data is saved where and who's the data owner. You shouldn't even say this. This is my responsibility. What are you doing here, Jürgen? Uh, uh, do you want to map SAP and MDM? No, not, that's not the point. We simply want to link these uh, topics. And this is what this is all about. Uh, we ha don't have all of the products from the list. Why? Because we're still very conservative. We pick the ones uh, for ourselves uh, where we feel uh, is th they bring the highest benefit, the biggest benefit. Then they asked me, Jürgen, do you want to replace it? Um, 
um, then um, the refusal of something new, um, it takes so much energy in companies to convince the employees um, uh, to, to, to tell them that it benefits what we're doing, it benefits them, that with Axon we're supporting people to identify uh, where they see the data, where they find the data exactly. And as we are speaking of it, it's like a fairy tale again. We're all like the hares. We're racing after the data, and then there's a new system popping up again. And then you find out, oh, in that department, they have this legacy system or that legacy system. Then there is a fusion of systems. This is exactly the issue. And you somehow want to control this, and that's difficult. And um, how to improve control? Um, and there's a whole series of lectures on this, is, of course, AI, AI and automization, when you uh, really manage or want to manage data. And uh, one thing uh, stuck in my mind, you're probably familiar with when you actually scroll through LinkedIn, uh, there's a lot said about chat GPT, they're cool examples, for instance, um, or somebody focuses on the dangers, the associated risk of chat GPT. There was a lady, and I don't know why I remember her. She was not connected, but she was on a plane, uh, and um, she met the CTO of OpenAI, one of the uh, important minds, masterminds of chat GPT, and they uh, entered into a dialogue, and they uh, talked about why chat GPT is such a big thing, the, the next big thing, really. And she wanted to know this for me, and the answer was fantastic. The answer was, it's not so much about the technology as such and what it does, but at the end of the day, it is about whether a chat GPT command or such a window can be given to my mom, and she can actually do with it what she wants to and generate value right away. And those presenting here today, um, they probably try this again. Give me a cool quote, a hip quote, and they get the 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 uh, answer. The application of uh, chat GPT is the decisive bit. It's not about uh, having the hippest technology that nobody can use or hardly anybody understands. The point is to create solutions that um, are implemented in a broad-based manner. And when we have AI initiatives, it's also always about two dimensions, the uh, um, uh, volume of users we can reach and and the degree of automation we can achieve. And we, of course, try to make sure that we end up uh, as high as possible. And at the Hoffman Group, um, talking about quotes, exactly, this slide can be immediately uh, applied to print. Why? <coughs> well, I can still remember we had the designs with the uh, uh, double fold a uh, page print has to develop further as well. We have to include more and more. Horst uh, already alluded to it this morning. The complexity of print um, to automate it, to become uh, more personalized. How does this work? We cannot achieve this with the same effort as uh, in the past. And this is why we're basically forced to automate. And this only works uh, if we find algorithms that help us. We're currently busy doing this. And we have also found that um, it is still difficult. And why? Because the data isn't suitable. Yeah, but we have 3,500 pages of catalog. We've got everything here, but not in the format we need it. And this is the point to identify and realize what is my data set, how good is the quality, how can I transform it or supplement it so that it suits new channels and new systems as well. This is the challenge because uh, print faces one problem and that is space. Oh, so true. And uh, um, 
you have to uh, think about the rules you really want to follow in this game. At Informatica, we do a lot with Gardner magic uh, tr uh, transformers, and you'll find us in the right uh, uh, position. The magic quadrant uh, was actually uh, cancelled. Okay, but Gardner has said it in a nutshell, ever so well. You can say we're doing MDM, and there's a data governance team also working on it. You have to approach this holistically. You have to put some thought to the rules you want to follow. Where it's happening, now where you want this to happen, and this is of course a key topic. And again, there's lots of there are lots of roadmaps. Uh, how can I provide workflows, set rules? How can I make sure that the data is transformed to a certain state in an automated fashion and uh, leaving the last mile, the high quality content to our users or customers? What about Hoffman, Jürgen? This is what it looks like at Hoffman. Uh, if, if you click on. <laughs> Well, um, at the end of the day, uh, the road is not blocked because we've sorted it out. We've uh, tried tidied it up because we know our data sources, because uh, we define roles uh, of how to handle our data. And it makes no difference whether this data is being used for print or for various e-commerce channels. In the final analysis, it is about using data as a basis for all channels. We've now started uh, focusing on content first. We no longer want to have a, a varying content per channel. And if uh, in an automated fashion, but we've got not come that far, it is important to build the structures in such a fashion that we can actually use them in a multiple way. And this is the trick about it. You have to tidy things up. You have to clean it up so that it becomes understandable. And you also have to know who uh, are the heads behind the various topics, the masterminds. And this can prove a challenge. You're building a data governance uh, organization uh, transversely, and then you've got some expert departments, and they say, well, but this is my responsibility. Yes, uh, true, but so far, and now, um, the famous word silo uh, comes into play. You never actually look beyond your own backyard, but you never factored in the effect on others, and now we've started uh, considering these impacts. We have a current case in product data, and this is uh, the where the effects were really serious. And we found that this e effect is now uh, gaining ground, but it takes time. And you must not really overtax your organization. This needs to be done step by step and in small steps. Exactly. And when you briefly look at what we've done so far, um, we've done more than uh, just uh, thinking in one dimension, uh, either products or customers. We said that we want to reach a certain degree of automation with AI maybe, but also with more um, uh, usual uh, um, technologies and one uh, issue that pops up time and again with many customers in many conversations also at the Hoffman Group is the ERP modernization. A minute ago I showed you the image of the data platform end to end. You can take a few things or select everything, focus on consumption driven elements, but the most important aspect to my mind is uh, that uh, the ERP system doesn't do any data management end to end. And this is why you should not try to squeeze in everything. 
for reasons of um, ap ease of application, but also because uh, the data is probably not uh, kept best there. You do a modernization and you're left with some legacy systems. You cannot simply switch them off. Would you do? when they need further data. Do you actually bring them down from the ERP, the, the, the cloud, or do you have to turn it uh, upside down and you start with the data and say, I have to think about my data strategically, composable uh, apps or composable ERP. These things help us. Uh, um, because there we can actually give up this coupling and be f freer. This is the trick. You have to say, I'm not uh, speaking about a strategy based on a software or a solution, but I place the data on an independent uh, level or foundation. Absolutely. A company should never be oriented towards what the software can do Instead, a software should be adjusted to a, a, the corporate data strategy or software strategy. And this is anything but easy to develop a data strategy. And um, for MDM, the issue is um, that uh, we, at times, not only have one ERP system, there are companies that have a number of ERP systems. But the, the issue is also that other companies say, well, we um, want to have more ERP systems to adapt them to markets, uh, to be more independent there. We have to identify which items or articles uh, are identical in the various ERP systems. And this is the trick to identify these unique articles. So this not only affects ERP systems, it uh, also um, refers to the, the articles in PIM, the PIM system or in the, in, in the SAP system. In the PIM system, we have three times as many articles than in SAP. And nevertheless, SAP is the lead system, um, historically speaking. Well, in future, there won't be a lead system anymore because everything will be connected. There are only different access uh, doors or gates who says that all items need to be uh, generated in SAP? They can also be uh, generated um, as a file in the PIM or on the portal. It's only key that I can actually identify the same items and how they are transported to various channels. So the representation uh, across various channels or systems must be ensured. And this is uh, what we try to actually uh, verify with data quality dimensions. It's not easy to do, but it's possible. On the customer side, this is easier to understand. You wouldn't believe how many double uh, doubles you have, duplicates you have. Um, it's it's whole series. For, for a number of reasons. And it may well be that uh, one thing is only a, um, uh, a data set uh, generated twice. This can happen. But this is also be to be identified. But historically, for historical reasons, there are also processes. And this is on the Hoffman Group side. And I know from uh, talks with other companies, um, Uh, because of processes, uh, 20 years ago, the impacts could not be seen. Uh, we could not know how difficult duplicates are to handle. And there are dozens of these duplicates. Well, try to digest what's being said. I hope you liked our presentation, but it sounds like uh, rolling up your sleeves. It sounds like uh, convincing people, which also brings us to the question, why am I doing this? 
I'm not doing this to justify my job to be stressed out after meetings in the evening. I'm doing it um, because uh, I want to give my customers an improved uh, experience. And I do it to be uh, commercially successful and to keep my, my uh, competitors at arm's length, be it B2C or B2C competitors. And there are two more things uh, I need to mention. Context, we heard this term before. Um, but the uh, CEO actually said it ever so well. You have to uh, always remember the context uh, for your data. Why am I doing it? Why is it so important for me? And a crucial factor is to understand what's happening out there. Uh, how do my customers shop? Are they happy? Or do I have a problem with a certain pr a group of products? Who are my customers to start with? Where do they shop if they don't shop for me? And uh, this is oft transaction data. This is dirty data um, uh, as, as MDM people see it. And uh, there, the point is to say we consolidate this. We can actually retrieve sentiments from this data and then actually f uh, feed this back to the person responsible for customer contacts because everything points at personalization. And in personalization, it's always cool. Um, the, the, the bad examples are usually the ones that uh, stick in your mind. With a big um, uh, mail order company, I would send two uh, ca uh, catalogs. Uh, one was addressed to my wife and uh, one was addressed to me. And it, it actually featured a woman on the front page and it was mainly women's uh, clothing in this catalog. Others say, well, you have a problem with uh, what you've been sent. I go to the website. I'm already sweating. How can I manage? And all of a sudden, uh, I get this window. Uh, should we give you a call or do you want to chat with somebody? Ideally, with a login and a profile so they know why I'm calling, roughly. And this makes things so much easier. And this is why you prefer this as a customer. And this also refers to the B2B area. Definitely, yes. Um, as you can see here, everybody has their favorite tools. This is a current campaign. Uh, we want to reach out to customers with uh, emotions, but also with personalization. But here the challenge is uh, to uh, forget about the classical 3,500 page catalog, which is sent out once a year to our customers. This is the old world. But uh, to really reach out to customers specifically, maybe only with the items of interest to him or her, maybe just a, a segment, and to, to trigger customers, to prompt customers, this is the challenge. And this needs to be very individual. And this is why we need this personalization. We have to know which customer which needs which product at which time. And um, this is really the turning point for us. Uh, on the one hand, we're still improving and correcting data and preparing this data for this new system or this new way of thinking. On the other hand, we already want so much more. And this is really this this challenge, striking the right balance between the hare and the hedgehog. One is running, the other one is pulling. Uh, where are we going? Where are we heading? So basically, uh, it's a race. There's new technology, everybody's talking about chat GPT, everybody, I have to look at it, then AI-generated images were a big thing, then the departments that want to do their own thing, and there's always a race going on. In the fairy tale, the story is beautiful. The ones actually always racing behind the trends um, is done after 74 laps. So you have to position yourself strategically. So in summary, uh, what are really the key factors? 
that uh, really sprang to our eye. But you have to break up data silos. We mentioned this uh, um, several times. The cloud is here, and you can't do anything about it. But uh, you have to understand that data integration is the key to is, I its success. And then AI and the underlying strategies. You need the technology, but the technology uh, needs to be implementable. And make sure that you don't have to undergo mathematics uh, uh, study to understand it. You need rules for data management. There's uh, lots of buzz about the ERP modernization, but there's more to this. You need the right foundation, a stable data strategy, and to conclude, whoever, and I'm speaking from my own B2C experience, my smartphone, my pocket experience, and I guess some will, f some of you will subscribe to this. Whoever wants to be in the lead in competition needs to personalize. And uh, this is why we have no last sentence that we agreed on as a lot. Do you have a, a spontaneous uh, summary? Yes, for me, one thing is really, really important. I subscribe to everything, but uh, despite all the technology and all of the processes we can create, the human factor is the most important one. When you look at projects, 70% are impacted by the human factor. Uh, conviction, persuasion, um, this is what we're faced with uh, on a daily basis. Change management is on everybody's lips. But um, this is also a tough one, a tough nut to crack. And this is why I'm wearing a green uh, pair of glasses. Uh, set a screen is always a good one for any uh, project. So all the best of success for those of you who are planning such a project. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask us. Thank you.